I've watched The Zone of Interest. It's a movie released last year, 2023. It's directed by Jonathan Glazer and is based on a fictional book of the same name. It follows the day-to-day lives of a Nazi family as they live just outside the perimeter of a Nazi concentration camp. The movie follows the real figures on whom the book's characters are based. The main people in this story are Rudolf Haas and his wife Hedvig. They live in a custom-built house staffed by servants drawn from the local non-Jewish populace. They live in comparative comfort despite the activity that's happening just meters from their home. The movie implicitly asks and answers the question that the viewer might be asking themselves. Can Rudolf Haas, given his situation, balance his role as the Nazi commandant of Auschwitz with the role of being a dutiful and loving husband and father. If you notice, the camera never gets close to the characters. It's always at least five feet away, if not more. Besides the lack of close-ups, there is a very noticeable lack of camera movement. For the most part, it's just fixed cameras, almost like the old school Resident Evil games. A character goes from one room to the next, so the camera switches from one camera to the next. Even if the house was huge, I think Glazer would have done the same thing. There's also a lack of movie lighting. Everything is just as we are actually there. So when they're outdoors, it's just sunlight. When they're indoors, it's just practical lighting. And that's another deliberate choice by the director to not present things other than how they are. We, the audience, are meant to be a fly on the wall. Not too close, not too distant, physically or emotionally. The essence of this movie, get the viewer to empathize with these people in their situation, not to sympathize with them. People tend to use those words interchangeably, but they're not quite the same. Sympathy is agreeing with someone, cheering them on. Empathy is understanding them without necessarily agreeing with them. It's certainly not intended to glamorize them. The creative team had done extensive research based on interviews, documents, to flesh out the depictions of these real people. Watching this movie reminds me of watching Succession. It's a show that follows other people who are very powerful and influential, but at the same time, they're not immune to internal strife within themselves or the people around them. To completely dismiss these people as monsters would be, I would say, cowardly. The reality is that the capacity for evil exists in all of us. As I was watching this movie, I was imagining myself in that situation. Would I have had the guts to volunteer for combat on the Eastern Front? Would I have tried to, like, stall things as best I could? There are some sequences that are shot in this proto-night vision, and they're intriguing because it's not clear what's going on, and it's almost like viewing the film negative. I've been a longtime admirer of Jonathan Glazer's work. He's not a household name, but he's directed one of the all-time great music videos, Virtual Insanity for Jamiroquai. And he's also directed one of the all-time great commercials, The Surfer for Guinness. This movie had been nominated for Best International Feature Film and Best Picture. It won the former. I would have voted for Perfect Days. It's not a masterpiece. That would be overstating it. But it is worth seeing. The greatest choice, I won't spoil it, is this abrupt switch within the movie. I'm going to follow Glazer's lead. I'm not going to state exactly when the movie takes place. If you do a little bit of research and you pay attention to what's happening in the movie, you can kind of piece things together, get a sense of the exact time frame. Holocaust movies are a genre, subgenre, all to themselves. I would place this movie up there with Schindler's List and The Pianist. Worth watching, although you might not want to watch it more than once.